How can your eyes be bigger than your stomach? Uh, how, how do you put up a tent? How? 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 How can I make water change colour by simply pouring it? It's got to be magic or, or a miracle. No, 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 friend. No, no. I reckon it's, a, it's some kind of chemical change. Mm. Simply because of my brilliance, I have to say. What colour is this water? Blue. Blue. It is. Now, I will pour it into the lemonade bottle here. And what colour is the water that's coming out? Red. Red, exactly. How do you do that? It is quite incredible, isn't it? it certainly is. Quite brilliant. How do you do it? This is how you do it. Have a look inside this lemonade bottle. There's red water inside there. There's also a cup inside. So when I pour the blue water into the cup, then it displaces the red water and pours it out of the spout, no. thus sort of changing colour. And that's how I can do it. How well designed is a camel? Oh, they're funny looking, Fred. They're not well designed. No, not no. elegant, Freddie. Not elegant. What should we do then to change the camel? Well, the hump has to go. The, the hump, hump makes it look has silly. to go. And the of knees course it does. Go definitely. The knees have knobbly, got to go. Let's get rid of the knees. Yeah, and those feet. They look like carpet slippers. Feet. Let's get rid of the feet. And the nose. I mean, it's very puffy and it looks very, very the silly. The nose has got to go. I'll yes, go and get take it. Take the nose off immediately, Freddie. Okay, That's nose a lot has better. gone. That's okay. It. So now you're happy. Yes. Yeah, that's better. Which is strange, really, because for thousands of years, the camel has been man's best friend in the desert and superbly designed to do the job that it does. But what about our streamlined friend here? Well, the first thing that will happen is, well, she will not be able to walk with his little tiny feet. She needs those big, flat feet to walk on the desert sand, otherwise she'll sink. All right, then, Fred, put the feet Shall back on. Shall we put on. the feet back on? So... The feet are back on. Okie dokie. But the problem is, of course, she'll get tired. She'll kneel down on the burning desert Ooh. sand and she'll burn her Ooh. knees. Well, she needs something to protect her then, doesn't she? Mm. Nobbly knees. Knees back on. Because, in fact, of course, the camel was born with those knobbly knees anyway. What about the hump? Why can't you keep the fat in the hump? because it's useful, but spread it around the body more evenly, like we have it, yeah? Layers of fat, of course, great insulation, but layers all round the camel's body, like a fur coat again in the heat of the desert. How much more sensible to have all that fat concentrated in one place like a rucksack, enabling the rest of the body to stay cool? What do you think? Yeah, put Shall we? back on. But what about that nose? It couldn't be practical at all. I'm very sorry, Freddie. Well, you're wrong there, you see, because everything about the camel is designed not to waste water. Its wee is concentrated, its droppings are dry, and it doesn't waste water, like us, when it breathes. Gareth, can you come over here with your shaving mirror, breathe on it, and tell me what happens? Oh, I water see. vapor causes water droplets to form, and that doesn't happen with a camel because the camel's nose is full of long passages which condense the water vapor, so it doesn't waste water. Put so what it do you think? back on. Put then. it back on. So now she's back to where she started. So how well designed is a camel? Superbly, actually. How can you square the circle? One of the greatest mathematical puzzles of all time. This is it. With a circle of a given area... Yeah, that's pi r squared, Yes, can you make a square of the same area? Pi r squared as well. Sounds simple, but it's puzzled mathematicians for over 5,000 years. The Babylonians couldn't solve it, Archimedes, he was useless with it, Pythagoras was fucked, even Gauss, the greatest human calculating machine ever, couldn't solve the problem. In fact, nobody could. Until now, here on How To, I will show you how I have solved it with this cake. A cake? Yeah. Cake. It, well, what shape is it? Circular. Yeah. And when I cut it open, you'll see something. Well, it's a bit of a math magical, math magical Squares. magic. Look at that. I circle and square. I have squared the circle. Do you want a piece, Freddie? Yes, please. But how, how do you, you do, do, that? do that? How do I do that? I shall show you. All you have to do is, of course, make some cakes first of all. 
some chocolate cakes and some ordinary vanilla ones. And then you want to cut them into circles. So you put a bowl upside down on top, giving you a bigger circle on the outside. And then you take something like a tumbler, put that upside down, do the same again. And what that is giving you is three circles of different area. Right. OK, once you've done that, Freddie, here you are. You lay them all out, and this is the really clever bit. You take the small chocolate one, and you put jam or buttercream all the way around the side, and put that in the vanilla one. Take that, put jam all the way around that, and put it in the chocolate one. Then you do the same, but the opposite to the others. Put buttercream <laughs> or jam on top of that, put that on top of that, then the other one, then the other one. Put jam and buttercream all around it, and this is what you get. The fantastic mathematical cake. And that is how I can square the circle. Pass that to Gareth, please. So um, it's all got to do with pie, yeah? Uh, well, no, actually. It's got to do with cake. How did the serpent get its shape? Well, you mean the snake wrapping itself around trees, that sort of thing? No, actually, I'm not talking about snakes, Fred. No, I'm talking about this. This is a serpent. It is an ancient Elizabethan instrument which I've been learning how to play. Hang on, just do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful, Gareth. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> hey, just a minute. All right, it's not me playing it. It's a chap called Andrew Van Der Beek. Andrew, thank you very much indeed. How old is the serpent? The first ones appeared about 1590, so it's about 400 years old. And um, how do you play it? How do you play scales? Well, it is a notoriously difficult instrument to play, is why you don't hear so many these days, but there are three holes here you cover with those three fingers. Right. Three more here, uh -huh. and you buzz into the mouthpiece as you would into a trombone. There we go. And by moving the fingers, you can get all the notes in between. And there, uh, how did it get to be the shape then? Good question. And the best answer is what we have here. This is a reformed serpent. Why reformed? It's gone straight. Oh! <laughs> and it's the same, exactly the same. Three, inch, three holes there, yeah. three more holes here. Yeah. And the mouthpiece is uh, you can't too reach far it. away. OK, I tell you what, Andrew, you do the blowing. I'll do the fingering, and we should right. be able to play it between us, shouldn't we? OK, ready, go. <laughs> so, being as it was around before all the other instruments, did it influence instruments? Yep, all? it was a very good idea indeed, and that's why all modern uh, tubers and trumpets and French horns have all the coils of tubing, to make it lie under the finger. So, uh, by being impossible to play when it's straight, that's how the serpent got its shape. Andrew, can we let's play that together? Let's start umpa. Okay. How do you make a green-haired thingy? Ah! <laughs> Some say that looks like me, utter nonsense of course <laughs> it is but you. you can make him and all his family how do you do it because they're wondrous little creatures you will need a pair of tights could i borrow your tights please um okay freshly washed and laundered thanks very much hmm. i'll let you have them back later <laughs> will you you'll need to get permission off your mum for this and cut them off in the area of the foot okay yeah right you can have these back later on okay <laughs> <laughs> open the tights up <laughs> And in the bottom there, you'll want to put some grass seed. Mm. Right. Okay. Yeah. On top of the grass seed, some sawdust. Oh, okay. yeah. Nicely filled up with sawdust. Yeah. Okay. Right. Then you will tie the top, or indeed elastic band it, if so you wish. All right? Mm -hmm. Following me so far? Yeah. yeah. It is yeah. complex, but we will get there. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. What so about the nose and things like noses that? Noses and things that? like that. You sort of bend a little shape, which will give you your nose and another rubber band will oh, hold that in place. Okay. And for its mouth, well, you can just stitch it, really, with a needle right. and thread. Then you will need some water. <laughs> and you will stick it in, bottom downwards, oh, like right. so. Yeah. So the water will gradually seep up till it reaches the grass seed. 
and slowly, over a period of 10 days, two weeks, the grass seed will start to sprout. And thereafter, of course, important to keep it watered. You can then produce lovely little chaps like oh, Fred here. It's you again. Cut his graft, whatever you like. His little <laughs> eyes, mouth, whatever. You can paint on if you want to with a bit of poster paint. So you've got a Fred. You've got a Carol. <laughs> and, of course... You'll all recognise <laughs> that one there. It doesn't look anything like me, Fred. <laughs> it does now, Gareth. <laughs> and that's how you make a green-haired thingy. <laughs> Marvellous. How can your eyes be bigger than your stomach? A rewarding how, this one. Who likes marshmallows? Yes, yeah, yes, me, yes, me, yes, me, me, me. here I've got some nice marshmallows. Oh, yes. oh, here small. I have some even oh, oh, look at that. Nice, big ones. juicier marshmallows. Now, yes. Freddie. You're a very kind, warm-hearted, generous, lovely-to-be-with person, aren't you? Mm. So you won't mind if I give Gareth one of these. Yes! You just do what you see fit, Carol. OK, here we are, Gareth. Um, hey, hang on um, a minute! I'll just take hang the lid on. off, and uh, there you are. Hang on, I want Deflated, my just big like you, marshmallow mate. back, please. You want it back? Not a problem. You see, marshmallows... If you look at them scientifically, are sort of spongy inside and mm. elastic. And inside they have pockets of air, just like tiny balloons. Now, how do you blow up a balloon? Well, you put air inside it. OK, you can do that. Okay. There's another way, and that's by taking air from outside the marshmallow. So, if I pop this balloon back in here, you'll see what happens. Now, what I'm going to do is pump air out of the container, and you'll see the balloon and the marshmallows yes. growing yes. in size because I'm reducing the air pressure around them. Oh. And basically, that is how they'll stay until I want to get hold of one again. What are they actually used for? What are these used for? Oh. Well, these are used to keep food fresh. They create a sort of vacuum seal. And that basically is how sometimes your eyes can be bigger than your stomach. How do you put up... A tent. Listen, I am the king of camping. I was a scout for many years. A tent, easy peasy. Yeah. OK, right. And well, I was a sixer in the brownies. Are you? All right. The yeah. There's a tent. There's a guide's hat. Thank right. you. There's a scout hat. Fred. Right. Off you go. Go and put up easy. a tent. Good luck to you. See you by the campfire. All yeah. right. You see, putting up a tent is not quite as easy as that. Although, I've got a bit of a cunning plan. Now look, this is going well, but okay. the important, the crucial thing yeah, is the if you main put hole. This in That's here. going to go through that hole. Right. Let's say, Carol, try and pull it Well, listen, I'll get in. Oh, the important this thing is going far is too well. Um, let's make the conditions a little more oh, realistic, shall we? Oh, I haven't. Yes, Evening. Oh, Wind's on. getting on. That's all we need is hold out of what happened. Ready. First, my pop-up scenery. Marvellous. You only need hole. three bits. Get your hammer. Go on. Get, get where's your hammer gone? Um, there's no point getting on a nail all that time. Next, my pop-up sunset. Splendid. Look, I've got this bit of a window. Why don't you put that? The central pole in, otherwise the whole that thing will... That like that, you see. And the... Oh! Now, my pop-up hat. Don't let that go. Whatever happens, okay, do not let it go. Ow! Sorry. Finally, my pop-up tent. Oi! Oi! That was a bit easy, wasn't it? <laughs> How'd well, you do that? Well, easy. Pick that red one up and have a go yourselves. Yeah. What do you do? Just chuck it in the air? You need to take it out of its wrapper first. Then right. Go on, do that. Yeah. Chuck now, it in the air. Throw it in the air! Yay! Oh, much more like it, Gareth. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Our so, hero. thanks to the aid of a very clever coiled-up spring, that's how you can put up a tent, and that's how, how for, for now. now. Right, let's get camping. Here's a quickie. How many things can you juggle at once? Well, it depends on how many limbs you've got. You see, no, you no, ca two. Gareth, exactly as many as you like. As long Carol. as they're stuck together in yes. your case, Freddie. Yes, the world juggling record is 11 objects. And they were all held by three Russians. Oh, I could beat that easy. No, Gareth. No, no, no. Now, if you're wondering what we're doing in here, this is how. Hey, hello! Yeah.